Hello everyone, uh, I'm Anurup here and today I'll be talking about biosignatures and the live detection forums knowledge base. So let's dive right in. So, let me start off with a question. Should we look for life elsewhere? Is it worth spending millions and billions of dollars just to look for some microbes out there? So my question, uh, my answer is totally a yes, because we humans are a curious species. We learn a lot from our surroundings and the living organisms we see. We saw birds fly and now we have airplanes. We saw whales and we have submarines. We saw a fungi battling with bacteria and now we have antibiotics. So think about some life we discover that has totally different mechanism. Think about the amount of knowledge we will gain. Think about the inventions that will come in place. So it would be really a great discovery. So let's talk about biosignatures now. These are also known as signatures of life. So a biosignature is any substance or phenomenon that provides scientific evidence of extinct or extinct life. So what's life? Can we even define life? So life can be defined by this working definition that is a self-sustaining chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution. So a lot of effort is going on by NASA and one such effort is live detection forums knowledge base. So knowledge base is a community based repository of all the current knowledge about live detection we have right now. It's still under the development stage. It's under network for live detection and it's a NASA's research coordination network. So let's talk about biosignatures. So biosignatures can be broadly divided into in situ and remote based on the detection method and in situ can be further divided into visual and chemical biosignatures. I'll be focusing on these today. So, how do we find them? In situ biosignatures can be found using landers such as Viking lander that landed on Mars or Huygens probe. This is a very interesting mission which went to Titan, a Saturn's moon, along with Cassini, which went on to explore Saturn's system and it also made an interesting turn it's in its mission where it dived into a plume of Enceladus, another Saturn's moon. And obviously the Perseverance rover, which is the most recent mission, which is on its way to Mars. And we have remote methods as well. So since four years, ExoMars Orbiter is orbiting Mars. And this is an upcoming mission that is James Webb Space Telescope that will look for exoplanets. These are the planets that orbit other stars, stars other than sun. So let's come to visual biosignatures. Imagine a rover lands on a surface of another planet, say Mars, and it finds some jumping Martians. It finds some, some different organisms moving here and there. That would simply imply that we are not alone in this universe, but that's very unlikely because we have sent so many missions and we haven't found such a thing. So the next thing the rover would do is take out its microscope and point it towards rock and soil samples. It might find some reproducing cells or some microbes moving here and there, but that's also very unlikely because the surface of Mars is really, really hostile. The temperature and radiation are at extremes. So what might happen, uh, but what we know is that Mars wasn't this hostile previously. We know that Mars once hosted liquid water on its surface. So we might find some fossils or artifacts of life so we might find some bones lying or we might find some exoskeletons such as some different organisms or we might find some burrows or tibules. These are basically structures formed by life. But visual biosignatures can't always be trusted. ALH84001 is a Martian meteorite that was found in Allen Hills, Antarctica. Scientists thought that these features you see were formed by bacterial activity. But Based on subsequent research, it was found that these can be formed by geological and chemical processes. So we need supplementary data and that's where chemical biosignatures come into play. So chemical biosignatures are basically can be of many types. So all living organisms we know have these building blocks of life in them. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins and nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. So if we find an abundance of these nucleic acids or these building blocks, then we can think of as a biosignature of active life. But then 
they might break down because of the extreme environments. So we might find the breakdown products. These are also known as molecular fossils. So this is an interesting biosignature as well. Or we can just look for metabolism. So one such property is homochirality. So as we know that baseball players are either left-handed or they're or right-handed. So similarly, life also prefers like the cellular met, cellular organelles also prefer certain handedness of the molecules. So all amino acids we have in our body are left-handed and all the sugars in our body are right-handed or we can look for isotopic fractionation. So in an environment, if you have equal amounts of carbon 12 and 13 and there is no life, the ratio of carbon 12 and carbon 13 will stay equal. Carbon and 12 and 13 are basically isotopes, which means they are same element with different number of neutrons. So after we introduce life there, we will see that the amount of carbon 12 is reducing because it's getting used up by life and carbon 13 is left out. So life is very selective and these selectivities can act as a biosignature. Then we can look for chemical disequilibria. So the room I'm sitting right now, the temperature is 24 degrees Celsius, but my body temperature is somewhat around 37 degrees Celsius. I am taking in oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide. Plants are doing the opposite. So there is a lot going on. There is a lot of disequilibrium. I'm releasing my body heat. So this can also be detected by very sophisticated instruments we have on our spacecrafts. And then coming to the last point, uh, that is biominerals. So we have bones, sea organisms have their shells, and some microbes have certain minerals in their metabolism. So if we find certain abundances of these biogenic minerals, then that is also a biosignature. So how to find, where to find them? But what we have seen is we should look for habitable places, the places that seem habitable to us. So we have a lot of places on Earth that resemble extraterrestrial settings. So first one here is Enceladus. Enceladus can be, is a moon of Saturn and it has subsurface oceans. Similarly, Europa also has subsurface oceans. And Lake Vostok, which is located 3.5 kilometers below Russia's Vostok station, it can act as a very good analog because we have found life thriving inside that. And why not to expect in these analogs as well? Then here comes Ellesmere Island. So Ellesmere Island is located in Arctic Canada and we have seen sulfur deposits on the surface of this glacier. And uh, very, it's very similar to the surface of Europa. Also, fun fact, this is my mentor, Dr. Graham Lau. Uh, so hey there. And then there is Atacama Desert. So Atacama Desert is located in Chile and it has very similar environments to Mars. Just look at it. it looks very much like Mars. And then what's the future then? So what if we find life? What, there are a lot of possibilities, but I will, I like to narrow down to just two possibilities. Either we find life or we don't find life. So if we find life in the solar system, so that means that we can just learn from them. As I mentioned earlier, we can learn a lot from them and I can't imagine the amount of inventions that are possible, but if we don't find life, then the solar system is ours. It can be treated as a canvas for exploration. We have a lot of resources in the solar system, rare earth metals, anything. We can colonize Mars. We can terraform it and colonize Mars. We can take a lot of resources from the solar system, but I'm very optimistic about the first one as I'm a budding astrobiologist. So thank you so much. And if you were interested, if you found this interesting, you can just go to this URL or just scan it. And I have added some materials. So I would like to thank everyone here for your time. And thank you so much BMSIS for this amazing opportunity and special thanks to my mentors and my working partner who is Nurbanu Erolmes. We have been working on biosignature amino acid abundance pattern. So it's so much fun. Thank you. Thank you, Anurup. Wonderful presentation. We have time for one quick question for Anurup. Yeah. Graham, if you can help me monitor. No questions. 
Anurup, what would it what do, what would it mean for you if no life at all was found? Yeah, so if no life was found at all, that means uh, it's a sad news for me because I, I'm I want to work on extremophiles and do research in that field. But if we don't find life, as I said, we can not treat solar system as an explore as as a canvas for exploration. We can just exploit it as we have always been doing, and we can bio mine Mars. I have just uh, wrote an article as well. You can just check it out by going to this link. And yeah, both the sites have merits and demerits, but I'm optimistic about the first one. That is, we are not alone in the universe. So thank you so much.